pledge allegiance to the flag of the a motion to approve the accounts payable manifest from August 14th, There were four for ten bucks in Vegas. You know, <laughs> passed on those. Your hair actually looks a little less good. Not bad. I don't have a since, so. Yes. Nebraska. Right. Yeah, not as much as mom and dad. It was trippy. You didn't have to work too hard to find a photo of the eclipse, I hope. No. <laughs> uh, four of us made it left and four of us came home, so... <laughs> separate ways as soon as we got home. But
actually put the properties down. The property is highly in money. That will become come before. They, they had to come before the planning. They had to come before this. Yeah, they they started. I've got a couple forms back. Uh, we have appointments from the budget committee and the school board now, so uh, we'll be ready. You know, in a month maybe to get rolling on that a little sooner. That's it for boards and committees. All right. Uh, well, I'm not sure what you know and what I know, and you may know stuff that I don't know, but uh, I did. Um, only Really, only a few things to mention that I haven't hit you with in writing or we won't touch on later. Uh, the loader is back at the highway department. Uh, there is still one small problem with it, unrelated to the last big problem, but Working fine, I think. Uh, one last thing. Um, uh, the engine for the grader is back at the shop, so maybe early next week. Um, we don't know costs on that stuff. The motor, we pretty well know. Um, let's see. Uh, we, while I was gone and since you last met, we, we got a number of calls in the office about the side spraying. Um, people are just concerned. You know, I think some would have the board say, just don't do anything in town. Uh, and I was just concerned that they're not seen before. Uh, asking questions about it. So, um, our, our response, and I think Don handled most of the calls, was. Um, there's a way to get out of it in front of your property. It's a pretty simple phone call. Um, so as a as a customer, you you know this is all these are all customers that are uh, and members of the co-op that are. Um, you can certainly ask them not to do it, and they won't do it. And get out of it. At least the portion of town that's served by the call. But I, just, I bring you that. Uh, also got a request for uh, five k on Thanksgiving morning. Trot for support the school's DC trip. Uh, Chief Foss is okay with it. It's legit. Uh, school's aware of it and okay with it. Uh, I would run from the highway garage down to the beach and back. So, uh, pretty short public. Uh, you know, tra the traffic impact's pretty, pretty limited. Uh, no, no, down to Town Beach. Uh, down All the way down the beach road and turn around. So, um, actually, off the road, we traveled the road quite a bit. Just, just Flutter Street, me and the old. Thanksgiving morning. But you have concerns about it. Uh, I think that's it. Things will show up later, but um, 
I, I didn't get an update on that today because they weren't around. Maybe you know. I know you were in touch with it. I was told on Thursday. I hope I was back on it. Get it. Hopefully they'll have it this week. I don't think they got it until Saturday. I know Johnny or one of the highway guys was over there with the loader late last week. Yes. Yeah, they needed the paper container pushed down so they could get through the week. Yeah. Years it, it does wear down, and but when you do have it striped again, it, it helps for a while anyway. There's a lot of places now this paint's gone, and people are talking anyway. Yeah, we've, we've had trouble with the um, right, right in front of these doors here, too. That's yeah. deteriorated into free so, um, Yeah, that's on a list of like, let's see how we're looking at the end of Q3 for this year. There's a, there's a number of things. There's some fencing up the recycling center. Uh, do something with the door locks in, some, in this building in some way. So there's a, those small to mid-sized things that um, we're, and we're waiting to see what we do with the game school and um, the, uh, you know, we're, we're probably not going to do anything with the old town hall. We do we did budget some money for that for this year. So I think we're going to have some some play. October, November, smaller. Put it on the list. Yep. Um, <coughs> okay. Any any of those other kind of general things? Good. It's been uneventful for everybody but the highway department. You know, at the Recycle Center, uh, despite the uh, swap shop being closed, a lot of stuff is still being piled up. People thinking that it's swap shop, swap shop type material, and they're just leaving it outside the shed because the shed's locked. Yeah, it's Saturday. Unless somebody's standing right there, people have it unloaded and they're gone. They're going to go back. 
country is uh, keeping an eye on things. Once again, there was one week, it might have been before you left, but there was one dumpster was just full, and they had net, that's when they said they were having problems getting them emptied. Yeah, it, we since then it hasn't been as. Bad. Yeah, we switched that to a couple of those dumpsters. We switched them to just come every week, this time of year, and don't screw around. And wait for a phone call on it because that, and that seems to have made a difference in the last few weeks. Um, we may slow that down come winter if they aren't filling up as fast. But yeah, that's a long-standing headache. But we're learning seasonally. We and if we need to move the shed itself, we can we can make the site go away in a way. But if they feel like they're able to manage it, then I'm, I guess we want to open it. And I had suggested, I said there was a That's just a routine validation of the late book letter or something. This is just like a standard form letter? Yep. Uh, How bad? And the board has to approve that before they can charge fines for late books. I was going to say, I, I mean, I've had plenty of late books in my time. I've had a letter. It's really, like, not like an extra week, but like six months. <laughs> he just reported himself. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> blame, blame your kids. That's cool. That's kids. Oh. Set the rate and Season. Yes, camp ended Friday. Uh, and, uh, the ladies from the department have taken a couple of days to find themselves again. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah. I, la I talked to Courtney two weeks ago, uh, and they, they looked like they were finishing. Sounded like they were finishing strong. We got off to a little good start. Um, the sign. Oh. Survey people here. Yep. Yep. We did that last. We did it for the first time last year, yeah. uh, and got. I, call, I think I called it limited response. We got some, uh, and uh, they're they'll be pushing that out again this year, and we'll come back to you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. What did you have in mind when you put that on the agenda? Because I don't know what you did while I was going in that regard. You were. So this was. Um, oh, the GEO. Yeah. Okay. Just this this to just, it's really just to show confirmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Yeah, that's so paperwork, though. Yeah, so I Over just down. asked. Andrea, too. Um, 
And do you do you and I need to talk about next steps for the Geo Insight work, or did you do that with everybody offline, or? Let's, well, let's you and I continue that discussion this week. Um, I believe Don sent you one other document that we get. Well, we got two documents in the last month um, related to this. One, uh, one was a response to the planning board's notification uh, about revocation of site plan approval. That's the only one I've seen. Uh, Yeah, we, you probably would have seen them last week. Um, so that will probably mean we suggest to the planning board they hold a hearing before taking any action. On that. Okay. okay. Um, that's that fits. That's okay. Um, so um, I'll follow up with. Yeah, or I can do, I got to talk with Joanna about all that stuff tomorrow, so I'll do that if you want. Um, secondly, I, th I think Don sent you a tiny print version of this ex parte motion to determine that assets will remain unadministered after final report is filed. Does that ring a bell? Uh, that. Yeah, I see it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, It's uh, Tony. Hold it up so they can see what it looks like. The back two pages of the yes. Geo Insight packet. Yep. Um, I at 5:30. I caught Jim Raymond in his office uh, just to chat about this briefly. It's this is the trustee. Um, in, this is in layman's terms, secondhand. This is in uh, the trustee asking the court to essentially close the bankruptcy. With a couple exceptions, a couple things held open. One being the Malum lawsuit, which could turn into money for the trustee. That's the $60 million fraud suit that's dead in some courthouse somewhere, but technically still alive on paper. Probably not going to turn into anything. Um, second thing is that it, w it appears to retain the repurchase rights in the hands of the trustee. He, the trustee thinks that there may be some value in those. We've had conversations about the repurchase rights. Um, the trustee is asking the court to basically close everything except for those two things and let the trustee um, hold those repurchase rights uh, in the event that something comes along that can produce something for the estate in terms of so um, the if um, if the bankruptcy were to close outright, everything reverts to the debtor, that would be Mr. Rotundo. So the repurchase rights would, would revert to Mr. Rotundo. Um, if a motion like this, similar to this, or this one exactly was approved, um, the trustee would hold those repurchase rights. There are some pluses and minuses I, that we could identify tonight, just kicking things around. Possibilities for us. Jim's going to put some more. Jim was out last week. Uh, he's going to put some more thought on it and get back to me tomorrow. Those options really are. Uh, and, uh, one open question is what does it mean? Uh, the, uh, there's language in here about the automatic stay. The automatic stay prevents us from doing anything that can reduce the value of the property. It's an expression you've heard before. Um, this motion like this may have implications for our ability to do things like that, too. Uh, so I'm going to get you more on those things. That, so this matters. Um, it's it's kind of crazy legalese, but it does matter to us in a couple ways. And we can object or we can talk to the okay. trustee. So and that's our... That's our, they're, they're our some actions we can take. Yes. Uh, our, our initial read on it was that this is generally good news for us. But um, you know, where, where do you want those repurchase rights to live is one of the questions that we really have to answer. Um, 
I, I may have something for you on that tomorrow, but this is not, it's not, a, and this is not cause for alarm. It's just, it's another step and it's, it's kind of what we expected. And that the trustee no longer has uh, avenues to get paid. It's two of these keep them open. Okay. More to come on that. Any questions? It was, a, I would say it was very uh, open and productive conversation. try to stop them. You guys get in there and they know the park. That would help with some of the
that he did ask that we send a letter to We gave him the ability We have the details of this deputy ranger program? We don't. We can certainly circle back with him. And if you enjoy this and the lifeguard program, there are things that are Read this stuff enough to realize they had their nose back because we gave it to everybody. But we got a lot faster than the response than we ever would have got otherwise. So it, it works. Maybe the next time we have to notify somebody. What's his name? Yeah. And, I, and then if we don't get any kind of timely response, then just copy them all to the whole. That, no. worked, that worked pretty well. How do you guys feel about writing a letter to support the program? Are you okay with that, Charlie? No, I say, well, when they, when or if they get it going, or they move forward with it, we will, should uh, just indicate that we will try to support that effort. You, you care about the results. You don't care how it's branded or however they come up with the money. You just, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't think it would make me <clears throat> not having the details of make me not support it as a concept um, but in, in talking about this with some folks in the law enforcement community that are experienced in working in the state parks one of the, uh, one of the items that was uh, often brought up was that at whatever point in the past the state uh, eliminated park rangers and took law enforcement powers created a lot of the problems we had. so what would these new deputy rangers be That said, I think it's the right direction to go in, even if it's only getting them halfway back to where they. So I mean, it's more of a more of an academic question for me, but like you said, on principle, it's a good move. It's certainly not.
That is clue who may have done it. Escorted drop off. So, kind of like a check before you. Single. Yeah, this is, I mean, the, this probably happened more often than we realize. It just caught oh, this time. It's the same way with like 14 times. It's been much better. So what do you know about SB 38? Anything? We're, yeah, you've, we've, you've been kind of keeping us yep. in the loop of not knowing how much we're going to get, but um, getting more clear of people. Yep. Um, so SB 38 was an extra appropriation from the legislature and the governor to all the cities and towns in the state to um, take on additional highway projects. It was a basically it was surplus money from the last fiscal year that they sent back to us in this restricted form. Um, and we have the money in hand now, 128,000, and we can use it for anything that we would really any, any project that we would use other highway state highway funds for. Same criteria. Um, the one big catch being you can't can't use it to offset appropriations that you've already made. You can't, you know, 
pull back your town spending on highway stuff for the year and use state money instead. That's the version of it. That is the usual routine highway grant money that we get that letter every year. They send it in increments, we don't get it all right. at once. Uh, and they tinker with the amounts every quarter and um, so that, that letter is not related to this appropriation. That is for our routine. Correct. Yeah. Um, I had a question on, on this on this sheet. Um, now is this this is an addition in addition to what was already got from highway block grant. Yes. It's a big number. Oh, that's it's a, nice. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's not. This is not something that is routine. That's why it prompts all these Over questions. The like, how do I do this? What do I <laughs> Lots of times we get this letter of notification, but what we actually got didn't necessarily match that over the years. Right. You look at what happens in the in the second two quarters of that year. Sometimes it doesn't always, right off. Yeah, it doesn't actually come through in the second year of a biennium or that, you know that kind of stuff. Um, this is this is done, cooked, money's in hand. Uh, it, theoretically, I mean, unless the legislature comes back into session and tinkers with it. This is done. It's found money. So, uh, the uh, if if you, and there are the the legislature's intent was to put the money to work as quickly as possible. They they made it very easy for you. To accept it. We'll we'll have to have a public hearing to formally accept it, which we can do when we decide what to do with it. Uh, we'll do that in a couple of weeks. Uh, but they really just made it easy for you to put it to work right away. If you don't put it to work right away, uh, it becomes essentially restricted money for that same purpose for next year. So you could uh, kind of put it in the bank and take it out next year with town meetings approval in the budget process. You say that we have this restricted money. I, yeah, you'd have to be careful about supplanting yeah, you'd have to be careful about supplanting what you've already appropriated. The, uh, the, the safest way to avoid criticism or, or rejection from DRA or DOT is to appropriate what you did last year for a continuing effort on highways and then appropriate this above. So you're, you're clearly not pulling back on your local commitment to For instance, that. our Highway maintenance budget is going to be blown out of the water. Can we use this? Offset yeah, I, I budget high enough for the reading between the lines on this one. I think we can. Uh, yeah, uh, equipment that's used exclusively for highway purposes. Um, if and the, the best way to show that would be that if if our entire highway department budget was over. When we run into surprise equipment problems, you usually figure it out within the budget. We may be actually able to do that within the highway budget this year. We may come in you know, with our our our, uh, our overlay spending was low and is low enough that we may get finished the year on the highway budget. Uh, okay. so, uh, I think what we need to think about is something in the neighborhood of 128 you know, roughly uh, in terms of how we use that, whether we do it this year or next is up yeah. to you. Um, there doesn't seem to be a real rush. To, I don't think you should feel rushed into a quick decision on it. I think we have, uh, I've talked with John and we have a couple ideas of things that we could do and we could do them this year. Um, but don't feel like it has to be spent this year or you'll lose it. So, That is uh, that is a good option in John's mind. We we don't have an exact price to do that yet, but uh, we're waiting for that number. It's probably about a hundred thousand. Um, the um, that was that was John's recommendation. If you want to do something this year, to do that, um, we know that it's uh, it's next year's work. We we have to do that next year. Yeah. We have to, but we kind of have to. Yeah. Um, 
if uh, if the firm that did it did the first half of it this year is available and comes in with a good number that could be a very good use of it come the end of September or early October um, you know, we could um, we could get it rolling while John is still here um, there isn't a whole lot that our people have to do um, the second half of this project is actually the it's only the second 40 percent of it or so we got through half this year the tougher half um, so that could be a if uh, now granted there's there's probably a lot of towns in the same position right now it may be tough to find contractors to do work for you on a big scale like this we're you know we're in the middle of the road small potatoes for these things the, the there are some towns that got big piles of money that um, you know are gonna get put to work pretty quickly but um, Lakeview could be a good choice for us. We'll know probably within a week or so what that number is. Johnny thinks it's going to be about 100,000 um, to finish that off. Um, that would jump us ahead in our general CIP stuff by a year, which is a huge upside for us. Um, we know that we have, um, you know, you, you've seen the list of projects in the CIP. We know those are all coming, and we've talked about additional paving work some of our gravel roads which we don't have money for in the CIP right now so freeing up a year there um, could really pay some big dividends we also know that we have to catch up on overlay we're, we're not terribly far behind but um, choice number two to do something this year would would be to use it for additional overlay work um, back of the envelope numbers we could we could overlay about two miles probably with, with this money that um, um, you know we're, we're not in bad shape on overlay but um, we could jump into we know we have Francesca and that whole neighborhood is coming up um, uh, the revolutionary neighborhood is not far behind it in terms of its need for overlay um, this isn't enough to do all of um, was it called Dunbarton um, all at once we couldn't get it all done this year with that much money it's too much too much frontage too much length um, and you want to do these things you don't want to jump around with your overlay if you can help it if you if we can keep a that whole entire vintage of road is all the same there's all within a year of each other they were all finished so if we can keep them all on the same schedule generations from now that'll pay off so in, you know, overlay could be a little bit trickier, but that is an option. Um, and uh, the third best option is probably to defer it into 2018 and maybe tackle something bigger or, or go big next year and, you know, let a, let a new person steer that to some extent too. So, um, so those are and I, I, those are Johnny's recommendations. I think they make sense. I, I like the idea of getting Lakeview behind us with the same, essentially the same crew that did the first half. They know what they're getting into. We, you know, we can get it done, put it to bed, and never go back there again. Uh, so that's that's the best option we have to give you right now, and we'll come back with a price shortly uh, and availability, whether we could even pull it off. This kind of work you can do probably into Thanksgiving or maybe even early December. So there's a, there's a long window there. Um, and we're out of crazy lake season for the folks that live there. So uh, it's possible again. Okay, any questions on that, you guys? So the kind of the you getting the assessment. Yeah. The, the back of the envelope number there is of 95 to 100, um, which would be a little bit of slop for something else or for next year. All right, what else do we have? I put the solar contract on your plate today with a thick memo. Um, which I can kind of skim through and we can, uh, I don't know, it's a lot to digest, but we need to move on it relatively quickly. So um, that is still on the plate.
for me. I don't know what else you want to tackle tonight. But. Well, we've got we've been through the contract with our lawyer and revisions lawyer and uh, gone back and forth and back and forth on a whole bunch of smaller things. We have two open issues that um, we can't solve, or I, I can't get to the point where I can recommend to you without. Doesn't mean you can't do it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. But it's kind of above my pay grade, so I, I come to you with those last two issues. Um, the first one is clause we got permission from town meeting to lease land for this purpose we did not get town meetings authorization to enter a long-term purchase power which is the other thing um, any time that behind the future town meetings that they to get around that, what we often do and what towns do all the time is put in the appropriations clause that says if the town doesn't appropriate money for this purpose, you can get out of the contract and you don't have to pay. It's standard fare, it's a New Hampshire What the rub is here is the language. have proposed probably meets the letter of the law and that we can get out of it. In practical terms, we would never choose to get out of it. It, it, it may not stand up to the, the intent of the law, <laughs> but uh, what, what we're seeing, what our attorney has said is, eh, yeah, you can do it. Um, judge may or may not smile on it, but you can do it. Uh, if what triggers in this in this with this language that revision is insisting on um, what triggers the uh, non appropriation we would say we, we we've not appropriated money for this therefore um, we can get out of contract uh, in order to trigger that we have to not appropriate money for the purchase of electricity. We wouldn't do. Right. Um, we, we would be compromising some other responsibility that we would never choose to do. That. So it's you know sure. Technically, do you have an escape clause? Yes. In practical reality, do you? No. Uh, so that is um, that is something that you can choose to overlook. You can say we're committed to doing this, and we don't. Intend Lots of other towns have done something similar. They've not unheard of, but it's far from perfect. So, if our intention is ever to get out of appropriate money for it, so I can't tell you that it's that it's. Uh, passes that test, but I can't tell you it's worth walking away from the, the project. Just binding you to it in ways that you can't get out. It's a, it's a tough thing to, the overall, we knew coming into this that we were setting ourselves up to probably purchase this system in seven years anyway. It, it makes a lot of sense. It'd be kind of silly not to. So we're really entering into a, in practical terms, we're entering into a pretty binding, pretty long term. As long as you do that with your eyes open and you're willing to, to do that, it's okay. I, I just can't tell you on that non appropriations grounds, I, I can't tell you that that's an easy thing to decide. That's a decision you have to make. Similar purchase arrangement, you know? Yeah, revision. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can ask them what kind of language they ended up with. 
we went back and forth with it, and our lawyer talked to our lawyer directly. And I said, I can't go forward. I can't bring this. What I said to the revisions lawyer was, I can't bring this to my board as you've given it to me. We went back on that a few times, and they've come back and said, this is what we do. So they're... So, I, it's up to you. Is it is it worth you know? Is it important enough to you to get this project done and can capture what we think is going to be those long term savings? Um, that's a judgment call that that you. Uh, the second issue that I outline in that memo is taxation. Um, I think we can find our way through this one after even after entering an agreement. But um, basically, we they don't want to be taxed. They don't want us to tax the value of their solar panels. They're selling us the power, and it's just it's a silly loop. That how do we get through that loop? What this um, what this contract does is it kind of sets the taxable value of. That's something we have to get through the the board of assessors. Some similar mechanism. You don't have the authority to set the tax on a piece of something that's accessible that's not um, so um, to get around that whole thing you can enter into a, an agreement with them called a, a payment of taxes or a pilot arrangement and that's exclusive to um, renewable energy things it's anticipates this and says you can enter into a pilot and we what we could do is that pilot agreement for 100 bucks a year just to you know, make sure they're being taxed as they're supposed to be uh, and cover us within the law. Revision's just nervous that we can't get all that done fast enough so, uh, get, to get to a point of having a pilot agreement instead of that other taxing. That second one, I, I'm comfortable saying to you, we can find our way through that. Pilot is the is the preferred alternative there for seven years. But What's the time sensitivity? We are up against a, a rate change. Um, the, the whole underlying structure on this thing is built on the tax credits and the electric rates and all that. Um, and we, we we pretty much have. Uh, I'm not sure which steps are which, but. We have to get some stuff into PSNA uh, to Eversource within the next few days. Um, I don't think this contract has to beat those documents, but we've got to we got to know that we're moving forward. In order to do that. So, really, the questions I have for you, and you don't have to answer them at this moment, but over the next day or so would be really helpful. It's how do you feel about that taxation question and that? Um, Something that we should discuss. Pretty you, straightforward. You can. Um, I don't like their language. It's going to be over one way or the other before they ever find we're here. What you're talking about, so you know it's. Um, I don't think there's any room left to negotiate on this. This is what they're willing to do, and uh, that was my last conversation with them. Was it what this afternoon too? So. so this part you put in here about your, your proposal to them about changing it to be the purchase of solar electricity from any source. Yep, that would not tie the town's hands, but it would insulate them from us turning to one of their competitors. Right in by. Right. That was my last, like, what can we do to get around this? Uh, and it's not enough protection for them. Uh, and I think if you think about it and you say, well, well, what if the price, the market price of electricity goes through the floor? And we just say, forget it. We just want to purchase power off the grid. Um, then they're out. And that's, that's not unreasonable. It was a... They're not worried about the other competitors. They're worried about the, the market price going through the floors and making this unattractive. Well, that's 
that's the element of risk in that industry. That's, that's not every justifiable. Has a risk. What's that? You say every business has a risk. Yeah. Yes. Right, and 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 what they would say is we're putting we're putting out a quarter million dollars. We need to know that we can get paid back. Mm -hmm. It's not unreasonable. No, no, but it's but the the remedy to that isn't to tie the town's hands for foreseeable. Mm -hmm. I think there are other elements of this that equally tie your hands. So that's why I'm saying this particular thing, yeah, it's an obstacle. But the finances of it are such that we're making a long-term commitment to this, to this deal anyway. We're kind of setting ourselves up for a purchase in seven years of the panels in order to capture those savings. And that's, I think we knew that going in. We knew it was going to be a long-term thing. Um, it, we knew it didn't make sense until year eight. It was a break even at best for the first seven years um, to, to, to get to that last 13 years or whatever it was, 20 years of big savings. That's, we knew that coming in. So, so I, the, the, the tying of the hands, it, this is just one of the knots in that. I don't want to oversell it, and it's something that I can have, uh, have looked past. But We didn't ask town meeting to approve it. We, we made a decision coming into town meeting. We said, well, we're, we're getting some blowback on this. Let's keep the vote simple. We were really worried about how we were going to present the information. Um, remember, we, we had scaled back a lot of the handouts and all that stuff because it's pretty, pretty thick in terms of the, you know, the payoffs and all that stuff. And we tried to... I don't want to say dumb it down, but we just tried to keep it as a simple choice for the voter to say, this is what we think the savings are going to be, and this is the commitment we're going to make, uh, and keep as much flexibility for the board and how we got there as possible. Uh, and we don't want to get into the, you know, you've got, you've got to be a 20-year approval, and then you're locked into a 20-year contract. Or, so we didn't get into the weeds from my recollection of town meeting, uh, we didn't get into too much. Um, There's a little bit about the financing, but. Um, Yeah, no, I, I, it's a lot to swallow. If the market changes, it's way it now, they're making any money, they're flying out of the market. That changes. And the price of electricity is taking a huge. And this, this a clause in the world that prevent us from going to public debt or anybody else. Yes, if the if the market price of power sank dramatically, um, we wouldn't be able to get out of buying the higher price electricity in the first if seven the years. Market so. sinks. We're still going to have to pay a certain amount for this. What we're getting from the solar, power, so they can, make, make so they can get paid back. back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, the, the the projections that we saw in March were based on the federal government's projection of retail energy prices, and I think they're I think they were modeled at a two percent increase over 20 and 30 years or something, and the historical that's close to the historical trend. One of the judgments that the voters had to make at town meeting was, what do you think the future price of power is going to be? It's really what you're betting on here. It's, do you think the price of power is going to go up, or do you think it's going to go down? I think you spoke to that at town meeting. And, um, if, if you think the future price of power is going to go up, then this makes sense over a 20-year period. If you think the price of power is going to go down, then this doesn't make sense. That was just, that's one of those that the voters had to make. Probably not. Not not other than what they got as voters at town meeting. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I remember the presentation at town meeting. Yep. Yes, likewise, if the, if the price of electricity skyrockets, we're still So it, there's some balance there. But yeah, which is understandable. All right, well, I will hound you all over the next six hours or so. See what you think. It's bad. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, no, I was asking about how many channels. What's five, seven, six? And the camera needs to go. But do we need to make the motion? Okay. That's there we go. There's the missing piece. All right, I'm going to make a mo uh, motion that we enter non-public uh, session for RSA 91A colon 3, section 2B. Brown, yes. <laughs> 